In this video, we will be looking at how to simplify square roots without using a calculator. Please watch the entire video because we'll be looking at many different things. Let's start with perfect squares. Question 1. Find the square root of 144. This should be easy for most of you, but follow along as we build up towards harder problems. To be good at answering square root questions, the first thing you have to know is your perfect squares. Perfect squares are the product of two same counting numbers. Example. 1 times 1 equals 1. 2 times 2 equals 4. 3 times 3 equals 9. So 1, 4, and 9 are perfect squares. These are the first 13 perfect squares. The square root of a perfect square is simply the original number that multiplied. So for this question, the answer will be 12, because 12 times 12 is 144. Of course, a typical square root question is not that straightforward, so let's look at a common one. Question 2. The square root of 120 is between which two whole numbers? The work here is to find the perfect squares that 120 is between. This is the list of the first 13 perfect squares. 120 will be between the perfect square 100 and the perfect square 121. The square root of 120 will therefore be between the square root of 100 and the square root of 121. So we'll find the square root of 100, which is 10. Then find the square root of the 121, which is 11. Therefore, the square root of 120 is between 10 and 11. Now let's look at finding the square root of non-perfect squares. Question three, find the square root of 18. When solving a question like this, the first thing to check is if 18 is a perfect square. Let's bring our perfect squares. We can see that 18 is not a perfect square, so we cannot find the square root. What we'll do next is to find out if we can write 18 as a perfect square times another number. We can write 18 as the perfect square 9 times 2, because 9 times 2 is 18. Now we can find the square root of the 9 squared root of 9 is 3. Since the 2 is not a perfect square and we cannot find the square root, we will leave it under the root sign. So our final answer is 3 root 2. Let's take a similar question so you can try your hands on one. Question 4. Find the square root of 75. Please pause the video and try it out. As usual, the first thing to check is if 75 is a perfect square. Let's bring our perfect squares. We can see that 75 is not a perfect square, so we cannot find the square root. What we'll do next is to find out if we can write 75 as a perfect square times another number. We can write 75 as the perfect square 25 times 3, because 25 times 3 is 75. Now we can find the square root of the 25. Squared root of 25 is 5. Since the 3 is not a perfect square and we cannot find the square root, we will leave it under the root sign. So our final answer is 5 root 3. Let's take our next question. Question 5. Find the square root of 21. As usual, the first thing is to check if 21 is a perfect square. Let's bring our perfect squares. We can see that 21 is not a perfect square so we cannot find the square root. Next, check if 21 can be written as a perfect square times another number. 21 cannot be written as a perfect square times another number. Once you cannot use any of the two steps, it means you cannot further simplify. So the answer will be square root of 21. Now let's look at negatives and square root. Question six, find a, the square root of negative 64. B, the negative square root of 64. C, the negative square root of negative 64. 
Let's look at 6a. Square root of negative 64. You cannot find the square root of a negative number. So in lower level math, the square root of negative 64 is undefined. For higher level math, we introduce the letter i. i is the square root of negative 1. Square root of negative 64 can be written as square root of 64 times square root of negative 1. Since 64 times negative 1 will be negative 64, we can find the square root of the 64 since it's a perfect square. That will be 8. So we'll have 8 root negative 1. We said root negative 1 is i. So we have 8i. Let's look at 6b. Negative square root of 64. Some students get confused about this. Here, the negative is not under the root sign. All we need to do is find the square root of the 64, which we know to be 8. Then bring our negative sign. So we have negative 8 as our answer. Let's look at 6c. Negative square root of negative 64. This is just a combination of a and b. We solve this part, square root of negative 64 to get 8, i. Then we can bring the negative here down. So we have negative 8, i. Please if you're not in a higher level class or have not been introduced to root of negative 1, then 6c should be answered as undefined. Finally, let's look at some operations on square root. Question 7. We want to add 5 root 3, plus 2 root 2, minus 3 root 3. You can only add or subtract if the radical part of the expression is exactly the same. We can work on the 5 root 3, minus 3 root 3, because they both have root 3. We will subtract the numbers 5 minus 3, to get 2. Then we will bring the root 3 after it. We cannot work on the 2 root 2, because it is dissimilar. It is root 2, and the others are root 3. The radical part must be exactly the same before you can add. So we just write the 2 root 2. Our final answer is therefore 2 root 3 plus 2 root 2. Question 8. Add root 8 plus 3 root 2. By just looking at it, you'll think you cannot add them. Because one is root 8 and the other is root 2. But the root 8 can be simplified. 8 can be written as the perfect square 4 times 2. We can find the square root of the 4 to get 2. Then we will have this 2 under the root sign. So now we have 2 root 2 plus 3 root 2. Since they both have root 2, we can add 2 plus 3 to get 5. Then we'll bring the root 2 after it. Therefore, our final answer is 5 root 2. Please ask questions if there's anything you didn't understand. We will end this video here. Please subscribe, turn on notification, and check out links in the description for more. Have a great day. See you in the next video.